<laughs> yo, 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 what's up, guys? Face Feeders here doing another gameplay commentary tips and tricks videos featuring T Martin here, and I will be showing you every class setup you will need to take over Modern Warfare 2 here. Every setting you'll need to take over every single lobby in the world. I have sat down for hours, days, weeks, and months getting everything down, jotting it down on my notebook to make sure everything you do here is with precision, accuracy, and marksmanship. But on a real note, I've been asked over and over again for a game that's been out for less than a week for my settings and my classes. I've come up here and I'm just gonna give you what I have currently again th This is gonna change super super soon the game's changing every day people are figuring out new things the game hasn't been out for too much, but if you ever want to make sure this video is up to date at any point My website is finally up fuse.com where my settings classes my setup every single thing my new underwear coming out my current pair of boxers or briefs will be on my website anytime you want to check it out just go to fuse.com but let's get straight into the settings here we're gonna be starting off with controller a lot of people ask me hey should i play mouse or controller if you want to get on play mouse if you want to have the ultimate advantage of having a robot aim for you play controller this game is completely strictly controller if you play mouse and keyboard you are at a disadvantage no matter what people tell you if you're aiming with your arm whatever aim assist is crazy good if you know how to like abuse it but for the uh, weapon layout i do play default now now that i'm on a scuff controller i just use my two paddles to jump and to slide i don't play with flipped but if, especially if you're on a ps4 controller i would recommend playing flipped it is faster than playing normally stick preset i'm not a freak so i don't use those controller vibration off trigger effect off my current sensitivity right now is 99 vertical aim axis i don't even know what this is i've never seen this in my oh it's inverted okay i don't play inverted i know a lot of older video gamers play inverted because of like flying games and stuff like that but i don't play it aim down hold automatic sprint i actually have it on automatic tax sprint but i think i'm going to change it to off because in this game if you use automatic tax sprint every time you try to get your gun up the uh the time to get your gun up is doubled in this game so i'm actually going to turn off automatic tactical sprint i turned it on to make sure my left thumbstick lasts a little bit longer but if it's going to make my gun come up twice as slow i'm just going to turn it off and just get used to how i did it before because i played with it off for like the first year and a half of modern warfare 2019 but i don't feel like it's worth using in this game weapon mount activation is preference once again for interact and reload i'd use prioritize interact especially for warzone it just makes picking up stuff like guns or reloading a lot faster you just have to tap it instead of holding it armor plate i just have it on default because warzone's not out target aim assist on i'm using black ops i switched to it in the middle of the beta and it felt really strong it doesn't feel the same way it felt in the beta but i haven't tried default yet but i'm just gonna keep it on black ops because that's what i've been using aim response curve type i use dynamic i feel like dynamic makes you feel like you have the most aim assist i could be wrong um and then this is what you want for the custom sensitivity i haven't really messed with these too much since i'm just doing weapon grinding right now but i have it on 0.9 and it just progressively gets higher as the scope zoom gets higher so it feels a lot like snappier dead zone please don't copy my dead zones but listen to the advice i'm going to give you here dead zone is basically how much of the stick needs to be moved for it to be registered as moving so the lower it is the better input like the lower it is the faster your input delay feels so it feels more responsive so put this as low as you can possibly go without your sticks having a mind of its own so have you ever watched someone in call of duty drop their controller and their sticks do they just start moving by themselves that means they're dead zones are way too low so just put this as low as you could possibly go and for left stick max i have it on 0.7 from vanguard and vanguard the faster you were strafing i think the more aim assist you had or less bloom you had something like that so i just have it on from that honestly this could go back to 99 it wouldn't really matter it's just basically how much you need to push the stick before you have the max strafing speed we can get into the whole how to abuse the aim assist thing later for sprinting i just have everything here on default for the most part grounded mantle i have off automatic airborne mantle partial I have most of these stuffs defaulted i don't even know what i've changed honestly i'm kind of still figuring everything out but this is just for the people who want to know for now i think everything here should be default these are just some dmz stuff yeah everything here is default and then now we're going to go into the graphic settings so a lot of people on console won't have these settings i'm currently playing on pc but i was playing this game on ps5 like the first day the only thing you really need to do on PS5 is just change fidelity, cast, and just do 100 so your game looks sharper. But uh, play full screen exclusive unless you're a mouse and keyboard player, then I guess you want to have the freedom to go on Discord or something. But full screen exclusive will make sure you get like the best feeling, the best frames, all that good stuff. I think playing on 1440p is a big jump. It definitely looks a lot sharper, but I know not everyone has the hardware to do that. Everything here should just be defaulted for the most part, but frame rate is something I do change. I have it on 300, and then in menu, I have it on 70 so my computer doesn't blow up every time I'm sitting there searching for an SBMM lobby to play. But um, I have 
have noticed when you're in the firing range, it does use this frame rate. So just know you're going to be stuck on 70 frames in the firing range. But I mean, it's up to you whether you want to have that or not. Um, brightness, just do what feels right. I kind of have mine a little bit brighter because the visibility in this game kind of suck. But that one's preference as well. I have HDR off quality. I pull in 100% render resolution. I would keep this at 100. I wouldn't go higher. I wouldn't go lower. Just play your native resolution. For upscaling and sharpening, I use Fidelity FX. It's the only one that doesn't make my game have like AI weird filter to like change your anti-aliasing and resolution. This one just kind of adds like a little sharpening filter on it. So I just have it at 100. I used to play with like 60. Again, this is just preference to what it looks like to you. For anti-aliasing, People have been telling me to use Filmic, and if the picture on the right is Filmic, I think you should use Filmic. I'll probably switch to it for now. I'm anti aliasing low. I wish you could just turn it off in this game. It makes your game look a lot sharper, but you can't. Video memory scale, I use 90. I have a 3090, so I have a lot of extra VRAM to use. I won't even use the full 24 gigabytes, but I would do 90, or if you have kind of a bad card, I'd maybe use 80. Texture resolution, normal. Texture filter, normal. Nearby, low and low. And the reason you want these low is because when you have these low, let's say you're playing like a big map like Ground War. Let's say someone's like hiding in a kind of like a fake bush like super far away when you ads because it's so far away there will be no bush on your screen so you'll be able to see them and they'll think they're safe inside of a bush or something same thing for clutter it just kind of makes it easier to see things i know it was like a super big issue in vanguard where you would like not be able to see things until you ads because they were so far away particle quality i have this on high because people said it's kind of a fix for like the frame rate issues people are having right now also i guess maybe it sometimes makes it easier to see because like when someone throws like a thermite next to you like it gets super pixelated so if you want you can do high particle quality level i actually just have this on normal i think this game's resetting my settings so put that on normal I put bullet impacts and sprays off only for the reason of people putting sprays on walls. I remember in MW 2019, there was this issue of people putting like the spray of the guy with a gun inside of buildings and that scared the shit out of me. So I have it off for now, but honestly, since they're not in the game, you can just have them on for now. Shader quality, this again should be on high. I'd only recommend putting this on high if you want your gold cam to look good. If you're noticing your gold cam looks like mustard on your gun, because you have your shader quality on low. The only way to make your gold look good is to have this on high as well as SSR, but we'll get into that later. Tessellation off, terrain memory minimum, texture streaming off, streaming quality low, volumetric quality low, physics low, basically all of this off. This is just to make your game look a little bit prettier. I, I mean, I don't personally care, but some people do. Particle lighting, you could do normal, but this one really doesn't matter. Actually, I would put this one on load to be fair ambient occlusion you don't really need this green space reflection this is what you want to put on high if you want your gun to look any good static reflection quality doesn't matter so put that on low this off low latency i have on on all like the optimizers have told me to keep this on on and not boost so keep this on depth of field off this off this is just kind of to mess up the game make it look blurrier than it needs to be or a little bit grainier so put these all off. I think there's a setting here that it might be the, uh, yeah, so screen space shadows. You can actually put this on a high. This will put more shadows on your character, like the gun. If you want your game to look a little bit prettier, because I know this game kind of looks really ugly, even on higher settings. It's kind of weird. This game looks worse than Modern Warfare 2019 on low settings, because I used to play that game with pretty low settings, and it looked pretty good, but this game just doesn't really look that good for whatever reason. Um, and then for field of view, I know in my last settings video, I say I play 120, but since I've been playing a little bit more tournaments and competitive games, I've been trying to get it lower, because like around like the 103 or 105 is as far as you can go like fov wise before you start losing aim assist and in the video i said i just play 120 because it looks better people still ask me why do you play 120 if it makes you lose aim assist again i just do it because i like the way it looks you know it allows you to see more but you are going to lose aim assist. play affected as well it makes it not look super weird when you zoom in it doesn't like actually zoom in your game a lot i play on a wide because it makes your gun smaller and allows you to see more of the the map in the screen you know uh third person field of view 90 vehicle field of view wide same thing and then in first person and third person camera movement should be unleashed it makes it look a lot clearer a lot less shaky when you're running around and sliding and all that stuff and then for third person ads transition make sure it's first person ads just so you don't go into a game and have their like helmet cam on and all that stuff just make sure these are on first person and game perspective other than that i mean there's not really much to go into. I know the best audio mix is PC. And if you're on PC or Xbox One, I know Xbox One also has this uh, this feature. By Dolby Atmos, it makes it super, super easy to hear directional audio a lot better. And I believe Call of Duty also like natively supports it as well. So get Dolby Atmos. It's like $15 and you get it forever. Get it on PC, get it on your Xbox, and then turn on game performance mode. And that's like, it's perfect for hearing directly where the footsteps are. Obviously it's not gonna be perfect. It's Call of Duty. The footstep audio is still gonna be pretty dog shit, but it's the best you can do. So audio mix pc master volume 100 dialogue you can put this around 50 as well i haven't really messed with these settings yet but 50 Weapons, yeah because there's gonna be people talking to your ear a lot effects honestly you can put your hit marker volume that one's really preference i used to play with it off but it's not needed uh subtitles preference 
voice chat on if you want to hear people argue. All this stuff is really preference. Dragon out music, preference. Again, all this shit is preference. It doesn't really matter. What is that? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. This is a this is something I've never seen before because I've never gone through the audio. But reduce tinnitus sounds here. I'm gonna duck for cover so you can see this. That means like when you get flashed or stunned or like an explosion, you know that <coughs> noise, it'll make it like a lot less annoying. So that can help with like footstep audio when you're getting hit out by 30 people stacking. So definitely I'd recommend putting that on. I don't really think there is anything else to go into other than interface after this. If I'm missing something, I'm sorry. But for interface, none of this really matters except where is it? Where is it? Color customization. This is a big thing for console players, especially console players. People come to my chat. How does your game look so vibrant? Well, here it is. Filter 2. Filter 2 is the exact same as filter 1, except filter 2 makes it more saturated. So the colors pop out a lot more. I noticed there's like this one map, it's like a turbine map and it looks absolutely awful with it, um, but everything else looks fine. So do it on both so it makes sure it's the UI and the actual game. Turn them up all the way to 100. And then for the HUD color palette, this is actually preference. So here, your color can be whatever you want. If you want to be a pretty pink princess like I was in the beta, do that. For a team, I would actually change this to like a super saturated green. I want to do that myself because I've been having the issue of not being able to see my teammates because the blue is not super, super like noticeable. So make sure whatever you're doing to put the saturation and brightness all the way up because it just makes it super easy to see. You know, your eyes want to be able to see something and immediately think, hey, that's a good guy or a bad guy. And you can see right here on the map on the right, you can see how much more green this is than my party, for example. And I did the same thing with the red color. Uh, I made sure to turn up the brightness and saturation. I haven't actually done like a custom color. I don't even know if I can for this one. Yeah, I think it's just this hue right here, but just make them as super noticeable as possible. Like nice, bright colors like red, green, and blue are going to be the perfect colors for these. So if you want to do yourself as blue, make sure to pick like a cyan, cyan blue. I don't want to say that one. It's a, it's a hard one for me, but this is what's going to help you the most. You can also use these to make sure you can see it in different lightings as well. Other than that, there's not really much here that matters that isn't already done for you. I like to have these on zero to make sure the mini map and all the UI is as close as possible to me. Uh, mini map shape should be on square, rotation as well. Crosshairs on, hit marker visuals, damage based hit markers, player names, make sure they're on full names. I mean, you could take out their clan tag if they have a bad word in it. But other than that, the only thing I'd really, really recommend here is skipping the introduction movie. If you're on PC and you don't want to feel like in a 4K Dolby Atmos movie theater amusement park where they're just blowing out your fucking ears, uh, please turn this on. Also, I'm going to duck here again. For a lot of people having crashing issues, I turned off parallax effects and I haven't had any crashing issues at all. And center dot here. For people who are new at Call of Duty, this is going to help you a lot. Make sure this is on and just keep it on default. But basically, it'll put a little dot in the middle of your screen. And for people who don't know what centering is, it's basically keeping the center of your screen where you think an enemy is. It doesn't really matter too much in Call of Duty because this game isn't super like tactical or it doesn't have like a huge skill gap, you know? Keeping that center dot around corners. If you think someone's going to be in a certain area, keep that dot where people are. So as soon as you turn the corner and see them, you just ADS and shoot and you're good to go. We're going to get into some classes. I don't really have my classes made in game. I do have them on my website already if you want to go into those because I'm still leveling everything up, but uh, I'm going to get into just how to warm up and improve as a player. So one of the best things you can do is hop in a 2v2 hardpoint or 3v3 hardpoint with your friends who are good at the game, just trying to get yourself better. But the custom games in this game kind of suck, if I'm being completely honest with you. You can only put five bots in a lobby for whatever reason. I don't know why we went from like 10 bots to five on the biggest maps in the world, but there isn't really any good 1v1 or 2v2 maps, so I wouldn't really recommend playing against bots just yet this is just kind of to future proof the video and make sure people who come back know what to do i'd put in like the smallest map i think right now the main map i use for like free for alls would probably be like farm 18 or maybe the hotel map just do free for all you can either do unlimited for the score limit or if you really want to get passionate do a thousand points a good reference to get better every day is to shoot at least a thousand bots before you even do anything skip your infill to save some time do health regeneration at fast just to make sure you can get into gunfights a lot faster uh enable the minimap and put radar always on is constant also in this game i notice you have to take off kill cam if you leave the kill cam on the bots for whatever reason to watch the kill cam like they're real people i thought it was really weird and then turn off the spawn camera in case it is on so you don't have to watch that animation every time you die and make sure their spawn ammo mags are on as well unfortunately this game doesn't have like specialist bonus so you can't really earn like other perks like scavenger or sleight of hand so if you want you can turn on field upgrades and just make the charge rate higher or just keep a default and then you can just use um like the ammo box or something for that reason, I turn off kill streaks since there's no specialist mode. You don't want bots getting anything in case they do. Other than that, you literally just go shoot bots all day, do hard points with your friends, just get really, really spooky. Um, as for classes right now, I'd say the best guns in the game right now is the TAC-56, which is the SCAR. The Lockman 5.56 is a pretty solid gun, in my opinion. The worst assault rifle in the game is the M16. For the love of God, do not use this gun. You will not kill anyone. 
I've unfortunately had to max out this gun and I wanted to pull out my non-existent hair. I think the best gun in the game right now might be the 74U. That gun's insanely good as an SMG and an AR. Or the battle rifles, I haven't really got into these. I wouldn't use them just yet. I think right now to maybe just use assault rifles and SMGs. Also, marksman rifles. Man, the EBR and SPR is crazy. If you're an aim assist demon sniper, use the SPR. That gun is absolutely absurdly good. I think it's going to get nerfed soon. It's honestly, I think, better than the SPR was in MW2019. Just because of how slow everything in this game is, you're so much faster than everyone, it's absurd. And for the SMGs, I'd probably say the best SMGs in the game right now is the Vaznik 9K. I think the Lockman's all right. I just think the 9K is the absolute best right now. The Hurricane's really fun, especially if you're a newer player. I think this gun's super easy to pick up and use. Fnatic 45, I think, has the potential of being one of the best guns in the game. I haven't really got to use it myself and make like a good class, but I heard it's really, really good. Now, I don't really want to go over like every single class I made just because it's not concrete yet, and I actually haven't had time to make them for the video. They're all put in my website right now, but I'll probably go over some of them right now or i guess just some tips i guess attachment wise a lot of the guns in this game make you or a lot of the attachments in this game no matter what they are make you ads slower for some really really weird reason so honestly for some guns especially like the vasic 9k sometimes it's better to use limited attachments just because some of them hurt you so much for example like the red dots in this game they make you i think ads slower by like five percent and that's not bad by itself that's like honestly not even noticeable but once you start stacking them with other attachments that's when it starts to get like 20 percent slower and it's just not worth it especially for like an smg that's already good on its own so for this basic 9k i use the or is that i don't even know how to say that but i use that sock right there the true tag grip and the the muzzle right here i've seen people switch from this muzzle to the uh there's a, there's so many attachments in this game i haven't really got my hands on them yet this barrel this response three is one you could use if you really want to get that like long range advantages it's honestly not that bad i would honestly use this as well you could put on a laser in this game this laser right here says there's no cons to it but they're fucking lying to you all right listen to me bro i was playing a tournament for thirty thousand dollars on the line i'm aiming at a wall and for whatever reason they don't tell you that you can see this laser if you're aiming at a door i don't know if it's supposed to be like that but a lot of these attachments don't do exactly what they say so just be careful if you are using this laser in like an s d environment where you're aiming down at a door pramming someone because they will see your laser sometimes this laser is honestly good but i don't know if i'm playing competitively i won't use it if you're playing pubs you should be fine i know a lot of people are also using this canted laser i think the canted laser is really good um i kind of just think it's not very fun to aim with i like to actually ads like through my side if you really want to like speed up your guns ads and just shit on people use that one it's really good honestly in this game i don't even think the combat knife is necessarily worth using i think the p890 and the deagle are really really good choices honestly i think the glock is pretty good too but i probably put it between the deagle and the p890 this one two shots and it's pretty speedy but especially for things like pistols that's where i'd refrain from putting on a lot of attachments but i'm not going to get super new attachments if you really want to check them all out just go to my website it's the easiest way to, to see everything but let's get into the flash grenade this is the absolute best tactical in the game if you're sitting in the dark while playing this game good fucking luck you just found a personal nightlight if someone throws this at you from across the map you don't even have to be looking at it and for whatever reason it will full flash you and this sh will put you out of commission for a good year or so stuns are all right stims i think aren't even good anymore snapshots are super super situational so honestly just use flash grenades they're the best in the game right now they're definitely gonna get nerfed as for the lethals i'd use semtexes right now or frag grenades i personally prefer the frag grenades right now but semtexes might have their place i know you can use them right now to slide cancel but i'm gonna get into slide cancel a little bit later and then i just use dead silence hopefully they nerf the animation it takes way way too long to use uh portable radar is all right tactical insertion for like those bigger game modes where you just want to kill the bots over and over again uh other than that i wouldn't really use anything except tactical camera i actually think tactical camera as a field upgrade too with dead silence is going to be huge in S &D. i've already found some crazy spots where you can literally just go super far away put the camera down and just check bomb over and over and over again and you could just do some crazy shit for a video as for the perks double time is really good Battle Hardened does nothing, just like it did in the last Modern Warfare. Bomb Squad is pretty good because everyone's just throwing nades around. You could use Overkill or Tracker. Again, this is preference. For Perk 2, I would either use Fast Hands or Focus. For the most part, if you're just playing pubs, I just use Fast Hands. I don't really think anything else here is worth it. And then for Perk 3, I just think overall quick fix is always going to be the best choice with how slow this game is and how slow the health regen is i just think quick fix is really really good especially if you want to play super aggressive and get in people's faces and just be able to heal a little bit faster you could use high alert or maybe overclock i use overclock simply for the fact that you can just get your attack insert faster but that's really only for invasion also if you haven't been watching my videos if you do want to level up your guns as fast as possible play invasion just shoot the bots over and over again and once they get armor back out and you're good to go but that's basically it for class setups attachment wise everything's really slow in this game i think they're going to change it because i'm pretty sure everything you put 
put on your gun in this game just slows you down terribly. Either don't put on uh, like a bunch of attachments or just make sure you're aware of what attachments you are putting on. So now that we're in game, this is going to be kind of hard for me to show off some movement stuff, but I'm going to teach you how to abuse aim assist today. So I'm going to have my dummy right here. He's just going to run across my screen back and forth. As you can see, my aim assist isn't working for me. Those PC mouse and keyboard frauds, like they were just wrong all along. You know, my aim assist isn't aiming for me. But wait, as soon as I do this, my aim assist is suddenly tracking this guy's every... Wait, whoa, whoa, now it's not. Okay, there we go. My aim assist is suddenly tracking his every move once he's close to my crosshairs. How does he do it, they might ask. Strafe might be itching his little baby head right now. Guys, like I was saying, if you want your aim assist to do everything for you, you just have to strafe. If you strafe and I'm literally just holding my left stick backwards against the wall, your aim assist goes up by a million percent. This is me not even touching my right stick, and it's basically aiming for me. I haven't tried this with the default aim assist, but in my last settings video, you guys saw me do it with the default aim assist, and it was even stronger than this in my opinion, but this is me doing nothing. And then as soon as I ADS, maybe it'll be even stronger, I'm not sure. But yeah, it basically tracks him for me. Again, not moving my right stick at all. And for some people who struggle with aiming, hey man, this is your savior right here. As soon as you learn how to abuse aim assist, you can get a lot, lot like more consistent in your gunfights. Obviously, it's not gonna do everything for you, but it's doing a damn lot. Personally, it's hard to train myself to like remember how to use aim assist correctly. There's a lot of times where I forget to, especially if you're focusing on something. But once you learn how to like really abuse aim assist, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, other than that, there is some like small movement things you can do in this game. So some people might be expecting me to talk about like the bipod launching stuff. I'm not going to get into like a bunch of exploits in this game, but you can basically just make yourself fly across the map. I don't think those are genuinely helpful and they're going to make you better at the game. I go on TikTok every day and someone just figured out how to slide a cancel for like the 30th time where they're all spinning and macroing YYs and stuff. People say stuff like slide against the wall and that's like a slide cancel. I mean, I guess like you're technically canceling your slide but like honestly i think sliding in this game isn't really worth it what is crazy though is if someone dives while doing like 30 360s again this isn't ever gonna help you but if someone dives at you doing 360s for whatever reason i feel like it's kind of weird like they'll go around a corner like hella fast for whatever reason but i don't think that's worth it either right now this game is actually just holding your pream if you think someone's coming around a corner if you think you know how to read someone just go around a corner man this game really isn't competitive as much as you think. I think jumping around corners might be your best friend. You should almost never slide unless you are sure someone's around a corner. Because when you slide, you can't ADS for like a good three seconds. So maybe you could do something like this. Catch him off guard where you just kind of run around the corner. And you're just like, hey, someone's right here. But yeah, even then, like when you start to ADS, it's super hard to do and do right. So I think just jumping around a corner and having someone to pre -aim. I don't think walking around a corner in a pre is really the best move. If, and they know you're there. You're just going to kind of get yourself killed. I do think you need to get the jump on people. But slide canceling in this game, I feel like just slows your gun down more than you think. People just do it for like style points. I remember people were doing the sprint and knife one where if you like knife and then you got your tax sprint back, like, yeah, it gets your tax sprint back. It's not slide canceling, but that's the whole point of slide canceling is to get your tax sprint back. I don't think it's worth doing at all. People are going to hear you punch across the map and let's say you go around a corner and punch and someone's right there now you're gonna have to take like a year to get your gun out and actually shoot at them i don't think it's really worth it mainly in this game just play like a slug hold someone to pre -aim, abuse your aim assist and you're good very quick note the m4 is one of the only guns in the game where it has the same multiplier throughout the body so if you shoot someone on the toe or the chest with this gun it'll do the same damage if you're new to the game use the m4 but for most of the other guns, if you shoot someone in the head once or twice, you basically insta-kill them. Even with the M4, if you shoot them twice in the head, it's three bullets to kill instead of like the usual four to five to six, depending on the range. Headshot multipliers are huge in this game. This is like one of the best Call of Duties to strictly aim for the head. And especially if you're just shooting at their chest, the recoil will most likely go up to the head. I wouldn't really recommend aiming for the head if you could just shoot them and kill them. But if you're lucky enough to get a headshot, it makes a huge difference. Um, I feel like mounting isn't that good this year as well, but you should definitely use it if you're playing super long range maps. But I wouldn't go out of your way to do it necessarily. I think having the movement aspect on a head glitch, for example, being able to throw a shoulder like this to check if someone's there. Let's say you're playing SND, you want to watch a cross right here. You can just throw a shoulder right here and they basically won't be able to kill you unless you have a sniper. Learning how to play for information, learning how to get into rush routes to watch a cross. That's really, really important in this game. Learning how to slide cancel and stuff like that isn't a big deal. Mostly, you just want to play the game, learn where people go, pre them, do all that good stuff, and then you're good to go. B-hopping is completely basically nerfed in this game. You can't really B-hop unless you get like a really good angle. And even then, like jumping as well actually makes your gun ADS slower. That's a really good point I forgot to add. If you jump around a corner, especially with snipers, I think it makes your ADS slower by 30% as well. So try not to go around corner jump shotting unless you sure they're there because it can get you in a bad situation. There is something called cameraing, which is very, very important to do in COD. It's basically to break someone's camera. Like let's say someone comes around a corner in like a weird way. 
it basically throws you off and makes you very very hard to kill um there's also something called snaking which is very very big it kind of helps and goes hand in hand with cameraing so if you want to learn how to snake it's literally the easiest thing in the world go behind a head glitch and simply go back and forth back and forth like this if you snake you can see them and they can't see you this guy's trying to shoot me and i can see him and it's very very hard for him to hit me but uh if you know who selium is this guy basically does this shit for a living guy's a beast and it'll really help you especially in snd clutch moments i think it's very scummy to do this it's looked down upon in the community and i don't really like to do it there's something in video games especially online video games called peekers at advantage so basically whoever is peeking around the corner and flying out at you will see you before you see them it's just like an internet thing there's nothing you can really do to combat it there's obviously small things that some companies do but at the end of the day it's kind of just an unfortunate thing so that's why playing aggressive is very very useful sometimes as long as you know they're there you're not just jumping out like right here and just not knowing where to look there's like so many angles to get shot from there's one two three four five six there's too many angles to get shot from if you haven't been playing the game enough to know where people are and learn how to predict where people will be maybe playing for peekers advantage won't always be the best but once you've got that like everything down learning how to camera which could be honestly sliding like here and then getting up like that and they won't be able to see you sliding in this game behind head glitches honestly isn't worth it maybe snaking is the only thing i'd really recommend there's this like a drop shot thing where back in the day and back in modern warfare 2019 you could go into a slide prone and then jump up and you basically go up in one frame you can do that in this game too but it's kind of too difficult to do and if they don't fix it i'll probably go into like a deep movement guide i kind of want to see what they do pick up and what they do drop from this game because they're very 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 strict on movement this year so if that stuff doesn't get nerfed i'll go into it basically just maybe turn off tax sprint just try to play a little bit slower pull people in a preamp but still play for peekers advantage it's kind of hard you have to play this game a lot more strategically and tactically i don't really like that but it's how they want you to play you have to play pretty slow if you want to do super well in like a really really high skill setting if you're playing snd pubs you should be fine but this is for people wanting to get better if you want to get better playing against better people playing against people you would say is competition every day is helpful and you know what they say losing is learning and winning is teaching actually playing against good people will help you play the game i mean don't play against people who are just a million times better than you you won't understand what they're teaching you um you're just gonna kind of get shit on to get shit on and that's never really helpful but if this helped you in any way i'd appreciate if you liked the video again ask me any questions in the comments or come to my twitch that's the best place to get an answer out of me but if it's on my website just make sure before you ask me any questions that you look through my website everything i use is there all my settings everything should be there so if you go through there and see anything that i haven't gone through in this video anything like that just let me know in the uh comments or my twitch chat but Hopefully this helped you guys. Hopefully you guys go out there and pwn some noob. No, I'll see you guys in the next one, alright? Goodbye. Stop f***ing shooting me. <laughs> Stop f***ing shooting me. Yo, editor, put me shooting this guy's f***ing body. Stop shooting me.